I want to show you how you can calculate the payback period and the discounted payback period using Excel. So just as a quick recap, the payback period is how long it takes to recoup your initial investment. So it's, it's got some flaws, but one thing that's really good about the payback period is that it, it's easy to understand. Okay, it's really simple and makes for actually a good secondary method for capital budgeting. All right, you have to keep in mind that when you're, if you're working as a chief financial officer someday, everybody in, uh, you know, every board of, member of the board of directors is not necessarily an expert in finance. These are smart people in business, but they aren't necessarily an expert in that particular field. So being able to explain things simply has value. Also, the payback period puts a premium on liquidity. Getting back our money, you know, is valuable. When you have money tied up somewhere, that can be, you know, a problem. And also it's the fact that, uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the future. So you'd like to get back your money as quickly as possible. Now, there are some flaws, for example, that it doesn't account for the time value of money, that it ignores cash flows after the payback period you set. And the payback period you set is arbitrary. Okay, It's not determined by some theoretical, theoretical um, construct like how much the value of the firm increases. It's just a number that you pick. You know, we'd like to get our money back in two years. We'd like to get our money back in three years. There's no real rhyme or reason for that. All right, anyhow, let's see how we compute this. So here we have uh, the cash flows for a project. It costs 317000 and returns $95,000 a year for five years. So we just want to see how long it takes to pay off this 317. All right, just mathematically, you can see that it's going to take more than three years because it's over 300000 and at 95000 a year, um, three years isn't even going to cover 300000 so let's see what we have here. So what's the what's the um, the amount that still needs to be paid off? Well, in the first year, it's the original cost. In the second year, or I'm sorry, in the first year, this is year zero. It's going to be this, and we're going to pay off this amount. So let's just put that in as a formula. We're going to pay this off plus the original cost. And so we've paid off 95,000 of it. And the way I put the formula in, if I copy it down, we'll see that 95,000 now is going to be added to minus 222,000. So let's uh, just copy the formula down. And you can see that in this case, the project is paid off in a little over three years, right? Between years three and four, you can see that this is. 32,000, that's about a third of 95,000. So it's going to be about three and a third years, roughly, okay, which would be three years and four months. How do we figure it out exactly? It's going to be equal to three plus, I want to make this negative because I want this to be a positive number, the amount we have to pay off divided by the amount of the cash flow in the next period. So what fraction of, of next year's cash flows do we need to pay off? If it was 47500 it would be half a year, right? It's less than that. So what do we get? We get 3.34 years, so about three and a third years or three years and four months. In this special case where we have all the same cash flows, you can also compute it by simply taking the, again, we want a positive number, so I'm going to make this a negative. The cost divided by any one of these cash flows here, and you can see we also get 3.34. 3 now, if the cash flows were different, you couldn't do that, but in this case, we can. Now, one of the drawbacks of the payback period is that we don't account for the time value of money. So, people have come up with what they call um, discounted payback. I put this in the wrong column, so let me just move this over here. All right, so this is the K 
cash flow. And let's have the present value of the cash flows. So we can just put in a formula, right, equals PV. I have a rate here, 10%. I'm going to hit the F4 key because that locks the cells. It's going to lock the columns, which I don't really need locked. What I need it to lock is the, the rows. So when I copy down, it just stays at row 6. The number of periods is going to be the year. There's no payment, so we'll put in 0. And we're going to put in a negative for the future value. And the reason we do that is, if you've used Excel before, if you put in a positive number for the future value, it's going to give you a negative present value. Okay, We want this number to come out negative, but we want these to come out positive. So I've done that correctly. We see $317,000, right? which is what we have. Let me just get rid of those, these uh, zeros here. And we can copy the formula down, and we'll find the present value of all of these cash flows. All right, so here they are, and we'll do exactly the same thing we did before. So let's just call this remainder. And we're going to have the same formulas we had before. We'll start with the original cost, and then we'll take this plus this. Right, so if you paid off 86000 in the first year, you have this much left to pay off. If we copy this down, we see it now takes longer to pay this off because these aren't all $95,000. you are taking the present value of it. They're smaller cash flows. So it's going to take more than four years to pay it off. So you can see that it's four years and then 15000 a little almost 16000 as a fraction of a little less than 60000 So it's going to be, you know, maybe a third, a little less than a third of a year. So it's going to be 4.3, 4.2 years. Let's do the calculation. Equals 4, because we know it takes a full four years, plus, again, I'm going to make this a negative because I want this to be a positive number. This divided by year five's cash flow. So we want to figure out what percentage of year five's cash flows are needed. That'll tell us how long it takes us to pay the rest off. Okay, so 4.27, this is not actually a dollar, it's actually a, a yearly amount. So 4.27 years for the discounted cash flow. So very similar to the original payback period, except we're just discounting the cash flows other than the time value of money has sort of the same same flaws that um, the payback period has. So for example over here it paid off in 3.34 years. Suppose year five's cash flows happen to be a million dollars. Well we're going to ignore those. Net present value won't ignore them. Internal rate of return won't ignore them but the payback period will. And again the choice is this project good over here? Well, if we set a cutoff of three years, then it's no good. If we set a cutoff of four years, then we want to accept it because it's under the cutoff period. So there's no real rhyme or reason for it, but it's easy to compute. And as I said before, it's um, a good secondary method. So I hope you found this uh, useful.